Larry. Phil. I got the chills like 1995 when it comes to the Bruins. Unbelievable. You know, Phil, I had mixed emotions as I'm watching the game because, you know, I went to Michigan for law school, but I'm born here in Los Angeles. And the other thing, Phil, is when UCLA goes through the Final Four as they keep going, I'm preempted by a local station that carries my show live except when UCLA uh, is in the tournament. So uh, I had mixed emotions (laughs) as I'm watching the game. I want Michigan to win. I'm from UCLA. I love the history. Uh, Everybody loves John Wooden, uh, return to glory, all that stuff. So I, I, I don't no, I, 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 it was difficult for me to watch, Phil. Well, I, can, I, I know. I, I saw Michigan. When I saw they, they were going to play Michigan, the first thing I thought about is, is the Eldersky. But here's a serious reason why I'm calling. You know, we had all these issues in November about the election, mm-hmm. and not one of any court that had any ability to have a look-see at this election, we are now facing their lack of action going from the Wisconsin Supreme Court to this U.S. Supreme Court. And now we have this guy that's got three or four trillion dollars in his bank that he has total control over. And it's it's amazing to watch how non-American citizens who come across the border are a priority for this guy, killing thousands of jobs in the oil industry, you know, we had frozen windpipes and windmills out here. He wants to spend more money on that. I mean, Larry, it is so unbelievable for me to just sit here and think, what's next? You know, Phil, Phil their, their, their view of America is the problem, or problem consists of two things. We have rich people that make too much money, and America is inherently systemically racist. That's all they've got. That's their entire agenda. Everything is wrapped around that. Everything is wrapped around systemic racism. Every single thing. Listen to uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Listen to this. Are you for real? So let's talk about this because so much of our national conversation, which is not a conversation, uh, about immigration is driven by people who could not care less about immigrants. Often people want to say, why are you talking about the border crisis? Or why are you talking about it in this way? Well, we're talking about it. They just don't like how we're talking about it. Because it's not a border crisis. It's an imperialism crisis. It's a climate crisis. It's a trade crisis. What the hell was that? Where do you start with this? What have I read? Illegal border crossing jumped to 150,000 in March. And also, it's a carceral crisis. It's a, it's a what? A carceral crisis? Did she say casserole? I'm getting hungry. It's a trade crisis. And also, it's a carceral crisis. I love casserole, but... I had no idea that we were running a shortage of it. Now now we're talking about systemic racism, okay? Now we're talking about a real crisis. There's a casserole crisis. I had no idea. Did you? My goodness. It's a climate crisis. It's a trade crisis. And also, Mm -hmm. it's a carceral crisis. Now that we can do something about. Because... As I have already said... Kirk had a mean casserole recipe. Unbelievable. He could solve that. Even during this term and this president, our immigration system is based and designed on our carceral system. It's designed on the casserole system? Those are some of the problems. What about the solution? Well, number one... I I looked it up. It means putting people in jail. And 